Runaway is the debut EP from Tile Sound, and I am so stoked to have him join us. Tile, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I am doing well. I gotta be honest with you. I had to practice pronouncing your name properly because I think you have said it yourself in so many different ways. People have said it so many different ways. Teo, Tayo, Teo, uh, and, and so forth. And it's a very interesting name. So I hope I got that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. It's such a great and unique name. I, I love it. And I understand it's Yoruban, which is one of the dialects in Nigeria, which is where your family is from, and that it means happiness. Is that right? Close, yeah, yeah. It means like um, to succeed, kind of. Um, but there's there's a, like a few different meanings. When in Nigeria, like when when they give you names and stuff, it's kind of um, it's meant to be like you know, ho hoping that that will kind of come to, to come to the child. So hopefully, there's success and happiness. How you've gotten up to this point in your musical career is very interesting. It, it all started when you were in church. Uh, performing music as a youth and getting involved there. Uh, what aspects of performing and seeing music performed live in a church setting resonated with you? I, I mean, I, I was really, really young. Like, I, I remember I, I must have been, you know, I mean, I, I was in church from, from when I was born. So it was just always something that fascinated me, like seeing, um, like, guy playing the keyboard and and, and, and that kind of thing. And I think really with church, it it wasn't like I, I think I kind of caught the bug for songwriting a bit later with um with my brother introducing me to to pop music, but it was really just music that really fascinated me in church because it's it's not you don't really you sing songs, but they kind of they all blend together in really long sets and it's very acoustic. There's not much like you know there's no synths or anything like that. It's just a guitar and some drums and, and a piano. So. Um, yeah, it's it really just music and the fact that kind of everybody in church is so engaged in music, I think from a young age, that just really inspired me. I know what you mean. My, uh, my cousin is a pastor and he actually is involved in the music side of things and he always is looking for ways of spicing it up and yeah. making it a performance. <laughs> so I understand what you're saying. But it also lays the groundwork and, and curiosity when you're a young person. Yeah, hundred percent. I think if you look at so many artists and musicians and songwriters, a, a lot of them um, have, you know, were raised in church. Um, even if it's not, you know, a huge part of their life now or, or whatever. You know, there's a lot of of people that that come from, especially gospel churches. Um, you know, that that kind of background where music is such a big part. Um, yeah, th I think it, it definitely is a huge inspiration. A lot of young musicians. So obviously, you ventured off and went to discover pop music and your brother kind of the catalyst for it all. Uh, prior to that, what was your exposure to pop music? Radio's around, internet is around. Uh, were, were you just too young to, to know otherwise? Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't have a um, mobile phone for a long time. Well, I mean, I, I was like 13, so I guess for me, that's a long time, but for my little brother, he's had one since he was like 12 or 10, sorry. So, um, yeah, may maybe nowadays it's it's uh, pretty old to get it. But, um, yeah, I, di I didn't have one for, um, a for, for a long time. I didn't really listen to radio at all. So all of my kind of e – everything I got from music was really from church. Or my uh, older brother, he um, used to have – like a Nokia phone and you could download ringtones. I was like the thing back then. Uh, and we download these re ringtones and then we'd go to, uh, on our like uh, um, Virgin Media TV box. They had a, Vivo had like an app on there um, and, and you could watch all the music videos. So we'd download the ringtones and then go to the TV and watch all the music videos. And that was kind of my first interaction um, with pop. Were your parents pretty strict in exposing you to that? It seems like that was kind of the loophole of getting out and, and venturing off and seeing what's out there. No, I, I don't think they, they were like super strict in, you know, censoring some, obviously certain songs that are maybe a bit more explicit still aren't uh, <laughs> allowed to be played uh, in the house. But I, I don't think it was that because my older brother was, he, you know, he was the one discovering them more. I think, I think we just we didn't really listen to um, 
a lot of music. We played music more than we listened. We listened to it. You know, I mean, my dad taught me guitar, and so we were playing music all the time. And you know, we um, we would listen to to a lot of church music as, as well growing up. But that that was re- really it. So it it wasn't really like a censorship thing. Um, just that they uh, didn't really listen to a lot of music. So you discover all these songs on your own, and you see that there's a different world out there aside from church music. At what point do you start taking it seriously and start crafting your own songs? So I, I remember, it, <laughs> it's going to sound really cheesy, but it is just going through life and kind of, so I grew up just in church. That was my entire life. So when I started like going to school more and um, having fall out with friends i think the one of the first kind of non-christian songs that i wrote was a song about falling out with my mates um and that was like i think that was a big kind of as you say like turning point in terms of like that felt really good to get that piece of emotion out like that just that kind of everyday drama that it felt really good to get that out um and yeah i just i just kept on writing and kept on writing it was definitely a gradual process and then obviously you know you get older and older relationship stuff happens and I remember being younger being like I'm never going to write about love like I don't want to do it but then you know that happens and it's kind of all you can think about um so then I started writing about that um but yeah I think I think it was probably quite gradual and then I started busking when I was about 14 and I'm you know did pretty well can't lie it made a, a decent decent bit of cash and um I think then I was like oh okay like my kind of the way my brain works I was like oh cool like I, I did this and I, got, I gained like 10 Instagram followers so maybe like if if I did this this many times throughout the year I could get like a thousand Instagram followers and then they might all listen to my music and it just kind of gradual like that and then by the time I left school at 16 which is we have uh, these exams called GCSEs in the UK which are like kind of our really important um, exams when we're 16 um, and when I, when I finished uh them uh i i was like okay i'm 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 doing mute by that point i was like okay i'm I'm fully set up. i'm leaving school and, and just busking for a living and trying to make it in music one song that i love and one that we had featured as part of our new music friday a while back was uh, someone new and that song i just am in love with uh, what is the origins Thank of that one it's a cool story actually so i i wrote it um with the guy who produced it rob milton who um, produces all of the Easy Life stuff, who I'm huge fans of, and all the Holly Humberstone stuff, who is killing at the moment. Um, and so, I going into that session, I was like kind of a bit nervous because it's rare that I work with somebody that I'm such a big fan of. Um, and it, to make it even more surreal, I walk in and Sam Smith is there chilling in the kitchen, <laughs> working with another producer. So I'm just like tripping out like this is the weird this is the weirdest day of my life um and I was like had just been broken up with so it was like a weird like uh combination of things and we we wrote um this one song and it it, it was okay and, and whatever but we kind of last 10 minutes of, of of the day we just thought let's just vibe out let's just vibe you know what I mean pure vibes and uh we had this kind of disco beat and we wrote these chords and I was just like, got on the mic and just kind of freestyled the chorus and, and the verse. And and yeah, it just came like, we literally wrote that song in like 20 minutes. Like, <laughs> wow. it, it was wild. But yeah, it was just pure vibes. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't like, and I, I feel like that comes across in the track. It's so good. Did you get to talk to Sam, by the way? Uh, nah, I shook their hand and then I think Sam fought, I think, they followed me on, on Instagram, actually. I might have to check that. Maybe, maybe <laughs> fact check that. <laughs> yeah, I think Sam follows me on, on Instagram. But that was about it. That was, a, that was, uh, that was, that was just, yeah, just shook Sam's hand. Hey, that was a moment. And now they follow you on Instagram. You're friends now. You're hey. Friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Tyle, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, big fans of your music. Can't wait to see what you have coming up. And really great chatting with you. Thanks, man. Great to meet you too. Should do it again.